Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Maths Moments Monday. Now, what is Maths Moments Monday? Well, it is bite-sized Maths PD by teachers and for teachers. Each week we get a new teacher to come in and show us something amazing that they're doing in their own classroom. Now, this is episode one, as I said, and our very first guest is the absolutely fantastic Chris Oxford. Now, Chris Oxford is going to show us something that I think is fundamental. It is the building blocks. It is solving algebraic equations using a method he calls doing and undoing. All right, take it away, Chris. I always liked the backtracking method, but I found that students would then struggle to write out the algebraic steps needed because they'd already solved it. And it was a bit time consuming drawing all the boxes for larger equations. So I'm using an approach called doing and undoing. And I find it's a nice happy medium between all the box drawing and doing it without any scaffolding at all. I like to introduce the ideas of inverse operations and reversing the order by doing a more concrete example of putting on and taking off shoes and socks. So I'll ask the students, what do we do in the morning to put, in our, put on our shoes and socks? And hopefully they come back with uh, put socks on, then put shoes on, and then tie laces. And then we say, well, how do we then undo all that? And the first thing we go for is the reverse reverse order and reverse or inverse operation. So untie laces, take shoes off, excuse my messy writing, and take socks off. That way we're seeing the inverse or the opposite operations done in the reverse order. If I need a second example, then I'll go for the presence idea and there's my doing list and undoing list and again depending on the cohort i might get them to come up with these things or i'll come up with the doing list and they'll tell me the undoing inverse operations gets a mention and reversing the order gets a mention all right for solving equations i'd start with an easier one but here's one with one two three steps to do so we're now focusing on the doing. This is like the building the equation. We're solving for x, so we focus on what happened to x. What did somebody do? Somebody times by 2, and then somebody took away 1, and finally they divided by 3. So we're focusing on bomb dash or nor normal order of operations. And then the undoing list, reverse the operation or inverse operations, reverse the order. Now what I find this does is let kids do that sort of thinking first and now they can go through and do their steps and do the proper algebra. So then that's up to you how much setting out you want done. I tell them to times by three and we do it to both sides. Simplify. Tick, that's done. And then we're going to add one to both sides. However, the setting out is that you prefer. And simplify. Make a big deal about crossing out. Tick that off. And now dividing by two. So it encourages them to do all the thinking first about the operations and the order and the reversing. And then they can go through, follow their list and do the setting out. It's also quite handy for transposing formula. So making L the subject of that equation, we focus on what happened to L. Somebody did these things here. And then we can go through and reverse those. It's a good conversation about whether you treat 2 pi as one thing or two things. You might want to say, let's put that in brackets then. And haven't got a great way of saying squared, so I might do that and times by g, and then you can work through the steps that you take. And I find students who I've shown this to in grade seven or eight still love using it in grade 10. Or kids that haven't used it before, 
I show it to them and they say, that makes so much more sense now. There are some limitations, of course. It's not straight away possible to use this when you've got variables on both sides. If you've got brackets, you might prefer to expand before, but of course you can say that there was a plus four and then a times two. And with trickier transposing, particularly if the variable you're trying to isolate is underneath, then it's hard to say what happened to the V because it was, you know, underneath, a bit harder. But it's great for those simple ones and it also extends well for operate for equations with lots of steps.